speaker, Emeka uh, Okereke, who is a Nigerian visual artist and writer who lives and works between Africa and Europe. Um, he was a member of the renowned Nigerian photography collective Depth of Field, and currently he is the founder and artistic director of uh, Invisible Borders, the Trans African Project. And uh, presently, his works um, oscillate between diverse mediums. He employs mainly photography, time based media of, uh, such as video, uh, poetry, performative interventions in exploration of the central theme of borders. Um, there are various kind of photo exchanges that he uh, organized between uh, France and Nigeria and also between, uh, I think, Lagos uh, and, and Berlin, uh, more specifically. And um, he has uh, well, exceeded it really worldwide and has a long list of, of uh, cities that I won't mention and also awards. Uh, maybe it's worth mentioning one of the most recent ones, I think, was the 56th Venice Biennial. Uh, where he curated and participated in the Invisible Border Space installation at Trans African World Space. Please welcome him again. Thank you, Christopher, for the introduction, and um, uh, thank you to the organizers of uh, the Genai Vienna um, for bringing me here, actually. My thank you is a specific one because, of course, we know that I, I almost didn't make it because of the borders. Borders. Um, it's easier for um, for Europeans to come to to India than Nigerians to come to India, actually. So, as a paradox of the place, you know what I'm saying? I have been more or less preoccupied with this question of theme of borders for say close to 10 years now and as such I founded this project which is um, a platform actually called Invisible Borders. And um, this project brings together African artists to engage or uh, to engage the question of borders as it relates to the 54 um, countries in the continent. But lately, or recently, it has even gone beyond that, you know, where we are beginning to look at um, the whole concept or idea of Africa, um, the history of Africa as the narrative of the great dispersal, where we um, talk about all the distances and all the many ways that Africa and blackness begins the world. That's where we are now with the project. Um, we do this with the flagship project of the platform, which is the Trans African um, Road Trip. Since 2009, we've um, brought African artists, photographers, writers, filmmakers together to make road trips across um, countries in the African continent. And um, while we're on the road, we travel together, live together in a van, and um, automatically, naturally, the van becomes a space for conversation. We have good sessions on the road, um, and um, basically, make all these useful encounters. Now we allow ourselves to be inspired by those encounters to create works on the go. Um, so far, they've, they've been about eight editions of the road trip since 2009. And one of those was a very ambitious one who traveled from Lagos to Sarajevo by road, um, crossing from Africa to Europe, to underscore the construct of that distance between Africa and Europe, and to demystify that distance. Um, so another thing is that many people tend to like in our project to Pan Africanism. But we sort of like, you know, I like to see it as an extension or a slight moving away from the notion of Pan Africanism because um, at some point, Pan Africanism became a victim of um, um, sort of a essentialism, you know, and got caught up in this 
identity that is around, you know, so much around blackness. While trans Africanism that we propose um, is somewhat, you know, um, focusing on fluidity, exchange, um, something that is not um, entirely definable, something that is constantly shifting, that it is okay to be as complex as Africa. And for, for you not to understand that complexness, and for you to live in that. So um, that's how we differ a bit from the whole notion of. That is not to say that we do not subscribe to, um, we don't say, hey, don't call us that. <laughs> yeah, we don't. But um, it's important to, to make this um, uh, difference. Anyway, this is um, me happy, you know, running you know, across the borders in Europe and the world. So um, I want to. Um, Okay, another thing I didn't say is that while we're on the road, since the inception of the project, we create works on the go, but we also share those works. So we started with a simple blog, you know, like um, stopping every two days uh, to come together and share images and videos and text on the blog. We started with blog, blogspot.com, but now we've gone, you know, um, all the way to um, using our own apps. So. This is our last road trip, 2018, and you can right now download the apps into your phone where you get notifications when the, when the artist posted. So the artists have their own channels. Everybody has their own channel, so whenever they post, you get a notification that this artist has posted something. So that's also a way of you know, um, keeping it going and you know, having more uh, people follow the project, be on the, on the trip with us, so to speak. Um, so now I want to show an excerpt from uh, uh, a film, uh, a documentary film made by um, Al Jazeera on the project in 2012, to give you a glimpse of you know the reality you know, on the road trip, so that you know you understand um, some of the things that I'm going to say uh, next about the project. We are in um, a mojo, a town that is not too far from the border between Cameroon and uh, Nigeria. Very early in the morning, we slept here. We come out in space like this. It's not your studio, you just begin to you know, improvise. Yeah, good. That is it. I want you to do something that is a bit awkward in nature, not standing straight. But like, what do you do now? And you're looking out there, one hand in the pocket, one hand in your head. We're looking at the no, 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 yes, I don't have that sense of that edgy. You won't know my for a long time. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, let's do this. Abandoned structures like this have become aesthetically useful. Maybe I'm like a very warm sense of beauty. Um, three doors go through. One door closes. They bring in harmony to the structures and how they come together to become one thing. Like even though they are all disorganized in the world. This is the huge argument we have about how oh, Africa is dysfunctional and all that. But the truth is, we have our own kind of organization and conflict. Improvisation. It's okay, I understand. Okay. 
And this is one of those coming from Nigeria into Cameroon. And while we're trying to cross, they say there's no road. They say, but this is a Trans African highway, we have to cross. And so we got stuck in that one for four days. But then that became the project. We left everything we were doing, we postponed everything we were doing, we started thinking, writing, photographing around them. And of course, making all these useful encounters. People who helped us um, to dig us out of the mud where the locals around us. Um, so that's how the project operates. Another thing is the place of the body. The body as an entity imbued with its own history, language, intuition, and not least of all, described violence. And in this case, I'm talking specifically of the black body. Um, we see the body as an object of useful agitation in the project. So the project is not so much about the photographs we make, the writings, those are precipitates. It begins with our body, with our saying, we are entering the van and we are going on this road trip. So in that sense, it is somewhat a performative intervention, and you see that way. Um, for example, in this image, um, this is um, made during one of our road trips in Nigeria, and this is a colonial structure. Um, Look at the guys' rest house, and of course, we, I don't know how many of you know. Um, Lugar was the one who appropriated Nigeria, and of course, he had a, a, a fiancé back then, Flora Shaw, and it was Flora Shaw that named Nigeria. And what we don't see, the part we don't see in this image, is you know, like a view overlooking River Niger, and that was where she was standing, right in front of this rest house. She looks over looks over Niger and said Niger area. That was how Nigeria was doing basically. Niger area. So this um, these are the participants. So it's a way of subversion or way of sort of like acting or projecting onto this building. Um, these are the ways we work um, with photography on the road. Um, like this as well. Um, and then sometimes like this where we um, come up with you know photographic interventions at the borders. So again, this is the border you saw um, um, in the film, the Nigeria Cameroon border, where we were having with the officials, telling them we're not going to pay the price. So uh, this is uh, Mana, the writer, who uh, I, I worked with a lot because we were you know like bouncing off thoughts, you know, back and forth each other, and he also became a figure in some of my uh, photographic uh, enactments. And he was standing at that, that moment's land between Nigeria and Cameroon for this image. Um, again, this, is, this image was made uh, during our road trip from Lagos to Sarajevo, this time in Berlin, in Matsan. And Matsan is a very, very tough area in Berlin. In fact, it's a place they tell you not to go to. So when we arrived in Berlin, they said, We want to go to Matsan. They said, What are you going to do there? You have lads. You know, this is a way you have immunized the skin hairs. You know, they're not even going to survive there. Berlin has not go there. But we use our body as an object of useful agitation. So we say, we are going exactly there because we want to. Um, so we, we got there and I created this work that was really public space in reappropriating our, uh, the EU bench. You know, some of these benches in Matsana was sponsored by the EU um, to sort of like typify or <laughs> get my son moving, <laughs> or to placate you know, all those people who, who thought that, the, that that dream of the West, West Germany, you know, failed them, you know. Um, so I did this intervention there and everybody was watching, and people were like, what is happening? Um, but then you realize that, you know, this, I'm very used to this, going to a place and you're like, a disruption, like a subversion of people's reality. First of all, look at you as if you're an apparition. It's happening to me here too, Mr. <laughs> where I thought I was going to be having more of a cultural shock, but it's people actually looking at me who was having a shock. <laughs> it's like, they see me in the elevator, they're like, first of all, they, they have to think, you know. They don't expect to see me. And I find that very amusing, and it's something that I have, I have, I have I've always experienced as we go. So, you know, I, 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 I see it as something that is proactive, you know, um, in that sense. So, it's just, it was the same in my time, where they didn't know what to make of us, you know, they didn't know what to, where to place us, uh, these black people. It's not the black people they know, they want to see with big cameras and things. Who are they? 
but eventually we um, um, we did a conference in Manhattan where I presented this work, and I tell you this work was a lot of conversations, and people were able to share personal stories. And I think for me, that is where the border is crossed, when you can get people to bypass all the differences and talk about personal things. And then you see Mazanians coming to talk to you and say, oh, and then they tell you personal stories, and these are the things that we miss in difference, is that we never get to that point where we talk about personal things, personal history. Um, what I call our emotional logic. Um, yeah, so um, we have we work in so many ways, like I said, conceptual, you know, documentary. It, it depends on the photographer. Like this is another photographer, Uche Okwaiyo, um, who who uses his body in that way. So as we make the road trip, you know, year after year, you know, we look at the words, we are beginning to understand. It's not the other way around. We look at the words, we say, what is he saying to us? It's not that I wear as like, oh, we have all these ideas. It is really um, dissecting and understanding the experiences of the trip and how it is reflecting on the work. That's what we make our own. Now, I, part of what we're doing is also to offer an alternative gaze to how Africa is seen. Um, many times, you go, even as of today, you go to many European cities, you see you know, um, photos like this. And, um, regardless of how well meaning these organizations are, these, um, images, what is ignored is the fact that these images, images continue to produce a certain kind of gaze, a way of seeing you know, uh, the black person. And that way of seeing is everything. You know, the way you look at somebody, you assume already because you think that you know. Um, and not only the way of seeing our gaze, but also it sustains an economy of aid. You know. So um, for us, we ask ourselves, okay, how about something like this? You know, an image like this that was made by a product on the road trip uh, in, in Dakar, from Saturn, which I find very, very powerful, beautiful, um, proactive. Um, it carries an element of, okay, there's some struggle here. Um, there is, you know, me trying to deal with my limitations. But at the same time, it carries that hope. Oh, well, it's not, you know, exploiting the face of the child. Um, and that's, you know, humanitarian photographing a kind of way. Another image is this one. Um, this one is interesting because it gives a sense of how we are positioned or how photographs happen on the road trip. Um, this was made by photographer who was also helping as uh, as uh, as our driver. So at every point in time he, he had his camera on the dashboard. And so he made this photo. But then look at what he came up with. So like looking through the red mirror, as if we saw like reference in that history of colonialism that was very much facilitated by you know missionaries and you know and then and then there is that juxtaposition. There is that um, projecting, there is that past and present in one image. And it's not even, uh, we even categorize it as stage or documentary or whatever. It, 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 it escapes all of those uh, conversations. But, you know, he was just there driving us, but also the, the photographer at the same time. So these are the, some of the ways that we, um, some of the ways we have used uh, uh, the camera. I will show you a few more uh, images. This is uh, uh, 2014, I think in Slovenia, the abandoned structure that used to be the border before EU, and then we did a sort of like um, a walk, you know, what did I call it, a twist in time. Um, but again, for me, it's just this lazy walk, you know, like the, you know, like the flannel, you know, the, 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 to be the black flannel, because, um, <laughs> Because you can't be a black planner. <laughs> You'll be thrown into jail for being a black planner. Like walking around endlessly, not having an agenda, you know, something like that. So we want to underscore the fact that hey, we traveled all the way, came to this point, and we can just stop our van. Our van that is registered in Nigeria, by the way, with a Nigerian plate number. Stop it on the corner, come out to the structure and just walk around endlessly without having a purpose. <laughs> you know, in that sense. So that's how this work came to. Um, 
And let me quickly talk about the place of writing in our projects. The first review we made was just small writing, and it was just by coincidence that she came along. So, um, for started writing, it was a quest, and um, now we realize that everything she was writing was helping to put all the photographs and all the films we were making in context. And so from then on, we started developing and having more writers on the trip, and they continued to write. And even on, on the practical level, there are places the, the, the cameras can't enter, but the writer can enter. And there's been times when, you know, police have stopped us because we had a camera, but then the, the, the writer says, I'm coming along because, um, because he wants to be there to witness. Um, so this is what, an excerpt from one of our writings by, um, um, I don't know if we have, uh, I'm just mindful of, I don't know how I'm doing the time. Okay. So the writers are also very much preoccupied, just like everyone else, this whole notion of movement, being a stranger in the place. So it's, it's this whole notion that if you are from Africa, then you know Africa is a vast continent. It's not true. You know, I don't know my own continent. I don't even eat all the food. I go there like, what? No, I, I'm not eating this. I'm not touching it. You know, and a lot of people don't understand that. Somebody says, oh, is this, uh, uh, you from Africa? No, I'm from a small part of Nigeria. And even in Nigeria, I don't even know what is happening in the north of Nigeria. So we're not all dead from Boko Haram, <laughs> you know, and all of that. So this project allows us to also go, we're not having any, you know, assuming that we know uh, we began by saying that we were telling this, we were telling stories, telling, telling, and then at some point we said to ourselves, wait a minute, tell, we gave the agency to tell, you know, all you can do is be the story, be the story, and the road has become um, a metaphor for just going in and see what the road offers to you. That's what has become for us now. Now, uh, they have already signaled me and telling me that my time is up. Um, so let me quickly um, talk about dissemination and exhibitions. Now, when we think of exhibitions and showing these works, we don't, like I said, you know, uh, it's not about the work that we make. It's, it's there are two things, um, two important things. One is that for every time we show the work, we are thinking about the complementary association between process and outcome. The project cannot exist without the process. So for us, process is archive. So it's always important to have a part of process. And we always have this in mind when we do um, installation. So this is at the Venice Vienna. We were able to sort of like create a, a sort of like a fragmentary a glimpse of of um, how we were on the road trip, the making of the road trip, how we were traveling together, and things you know, like, yeah, like that. But in the other room, we now had, you know, um, screens on the floor, projecting images, and placing it in such a way that people can navigate the images, just like we do on the road, you know. And there were also two entrances, and of course, by that exit into the space. Um, now. To talk about this projection, this video projection on this wall, I was we were discussing with the artistic director, OP and Mozo at the time. Um, and he was very fascinated by you know, the fact that we had the wall of the arsenal. And we were thinking of putting a screen on the wall to project. But then at some point we said, no, actually, this is really great to project the video coming from the road trip on this wall that you know the history of Venice Viana is that you know uh, 1905, 1906 when the British, the French, the, the Belgians, uh, you know, busy is beating in um, uh, in uh, the Venice Viana. It was at the same time they were looting Africa and taking all that. There was a, it was a height of looting Africa and taking all of that. And you know, so Venice Viana and those wars carried those histories, and it was um, interesting for us to project our own. Um, subjectivity onto, you know, this, um, 
this wall of Arsenal. So, like, so like to dialogue with uh, you know that history or to um, you know you understand. Um, so we've gone on that way to form Amsterdam. We've done the same. It's been a format we've kept, and more and more text um, is coming into the you know it's, it's becoming an, it's having a prominent role in the in, in the project. This is our exhibition in 2017 at the uh, Centre Pompidou in Paris. And uh, again, here now, text uh, had a prominence, really, like, was used as, you know, uh, to mediate the images. And so far, it's really working in the, that format. And we're still exploring, we're still exploring other ways. Um, and even chapbooks now. But um, I would like to end with, um, our most recent exhibition just ended in Lagos, where we decided to use the space of the railway complex in Lagos. Uh, so we, we uh, repurposed uh, and cleaned up and abandoned, you know, messed up the structure um, inside the railway um, to now use it for our exhibition. And that's because um, for this exhibition, we are going to be exhibiting um, works that came from the road trip within Nigeria. And that, uh, that basically uh, tries to compass what does it mean to be Nigerian. And this exhibition is very much you know, grounded in the notion of history and memory, because this is something that is really new in terms of uh, the conversation happening in Nigeria, like this self imposed amnesia. We Nigerians say we are one of the happiest people in the world, but that's also because we like to look the other way not you know come back to to history and to question how you know to really understand you know how the country was put together and to ask ourselves how do we begin to forge a common national interest that will now make us a country so we focus on this whole memory and um, this whole idea of memory and history in the place of the Nigerian narrative um, so, yeah, I know you've seen this work in the, in the video, uh, sorry, in the, in the image that I showed from Pompidou. But then we brought it here again. And this one, uh, we have this problem in, in Nigeria. I think that India also has the same, where, you know, if we had the chance, we would just see them all back and eyes and go our way. And we are trying to also be part of that conversation. But doing it in structures like this, that is an everyday space and that our audience are not the habitual audience of the art world where it is really, this is also um, um, a residential place, so people are moving back and forth um, this structure here. But what's interesting is that um, we have become part of this conversation that is also happening in Lagos and in Nigeria about how can we use spaces, how can we, you know, um, uh, we propose spaces for exhibitions and, and, and um, artistic interventions. So, this is um, where I'm going to end. All of this is to say that uh, this project is a project that looks to bring artists together to um, explore ways to employ or put their subjective truths, their sub subjectivity, at the service of something great, a collective uh, or a collective truth. Thank you.